Endurance running may have played a key role in human evolution. For our ancient ancestors, exhausting prey during a long-term chase may have been essential for survival. However, we aren't even close to being the fastest animal. Certain dogs can run up to 40 miles per hour. Lions can reach up to 50 miles per hour. Antelope, 60 miles per hour. But did you know that humans can outrun any land animal over a long enough distance? Evidence that endurance running was important for early humans is based on various morphological traits seen in human fossils. These fossils show the development of body structures that facilitate a running lifestyle. The first bipedal species in the genus Homo was the most recent common ancestor between humans and Australopithecus, a hominin species living about 3.5 million years ago. Since branching off from Australopithecus, our ancestors have developed modifications for body stabilization. One such modification unique to Homo is the nuchal ligament, located between the skull and the upper shoulders. This ligament balances the head while the body is constantly impacting the ground in a running gait. Without it, our head would bob back and forth as if we were a rag doll. Another important feature seen in the fossil record is the gradual shortening of toe length. The toes of apes are longer than the toes of Australopithecus, which are in turn longer than human toes. Human runners would find it energetically favorable to have shorter toes. Think about a seesaw. Applying pressure further away from the center makes it harder for the other side to balance it. With shorter toes, a lot less energy would be required to push the body forward. What was so important about running? Isn't the main difference between us and our primate ancestors brain size and brain ability? There are a few reasons why enhancing endurance running capabilities could have contributed to human survival. Before our ancestors developed tools, they were very weak compared to other animals. Using just their bare hands, killing prey would be almost impossible for them. Instead, they would have to scavenge for animals that were already dead. If there was a signal for a carcass in the distance, such as birds circling overhead, they would have to get to it before other carnivores could claim it. Persistence hunting is another method for finding food that requires running. Ancient humans may not have been able to kill prey without tools, but they would be able to exhaust any animal by simply chasing it. After chasing the prey for a long enough time, it would be too exhausted to give an adequate fight back, making for an easy kill. Finally, if we are so closely related to chimpanzees, why aren't we as hairy as them? Selective pressure to run may have caused our ancestors to lose some hair. The shedding of hair and increased ability to sweat through evolution was important for human body heat regulation. Unlike wolves and other hunting animals, humans would hunt during the day and face the heat of the sun. This relates to persistence hunting. While humans could keep cool while sweating under the sun, their target may not have been as lucky. These modifications became key distinctions between humans and our primate relatives. Examining today's athletes reveals that genes really do play a part in human running ability. A distinct trade-off exists between elite sprinting and elite endurance running due to genetic variation. Also, genes such as COL5A1 and polymorphisms in the angiotensin 1 converting enzyme gene are associated with endurance running performance. Even today, it is easily visible in our DNA that running is linked to our human genetic identity.